now starting with another group of kingdom protesta and that is protozoan protest now protozoan protests they are animal like protests now when we say animal like that means they are not photo autotrophs so they would be showing different types of modes of uh, nutrition but for photosynthesis and this is one of the most diverse groups diverse means they show uh, various types of locomotive structure their body shape the nuclei everything is variable we'll take couple of examples to understand what kind of variation is seen in this particular group this is our second group that we are talking of we have already talked of photosynthetic protest so in protozoan protest the as they are protest that means all of them are unicellular but the cell shape can be irregular so if you are talking about the shape it can be irregular like in case of amoeba it could be slipper like that is in case of paramecium that means there is variation we will talk about other organisms also and their shapes now if we talk about the nuclei they can be uninucleate binucleate or multinucleate uninucleate we can take the example of amoeba binucleate of paramecium and multinucleate we can take of pilomyxa mode of nutrition this is nuclei now here we are talking about nutrition nutrition means they can be parasitic free living that is holozoic symbiotic or they can show other modes also except photosynthesis so parasitic means endoparasite or ectoparasites but most of them are endoparasites holozoic that means they are going to take something in the form of a particle symbiotic or they can also grow on dead and decomposing organic matter so they could be saprophytic also so there are various modes and all these are included except photosynthesis because they are not photo autotrophs the structures which help in locomotion they are also variable so locomotive structures now on the basis of this locomotive structures only we are going to further classify this group so a protozoan protists are further classified on the basis of this only and we will take the further description on the basis of this so what is the locomotive structure it could be flagella then the group will be called zoo flagellata the locomotive structure could be cilia then the group will be called ciliata the locomotive structure could be pseudopodia and the group will be called sarcodina and the fourth is here there are actually no locomotive structure they are endoparasites and spore formation takes place so that is known as sporozoa so we will further divide this on the basis of the locomotive structure and we will take up the general characteristics of these group plus the examples so we will start with zoo flagellata now as the name tells us the locomotive structure is flagella so flagella are present 
Now when we say flagella are present, the number is one too many. They can be only one flagella or they can be many flagella. When we take examples, we'll understand where these numbers are changing. Then most of the zoo flagellates, most of them are endoparasites and pathogenic. That means they are disease causing. They show only asexual reproduction and that is by longitudinal binary fission. We will take few examples of this particular group. The first example that we are talking about of this group is Trypanosoma gambiens. Trypanosoma gambiens, it is a uniflagellate endoparasite. Uniflagellate endoparasite. And it is digenetic. Digenetic means it completes its life cycle in two hosts. Life cycle in two hosts. One host is man, that is human first or we can say one host. The second host is commonly known as sissy fly. Its scientific name is glossy, sorry, glossy Sina pal palis. This is the scientific name of sissy fly. Sissy fly is a common name which is given to it. So it is found in, or it completes its life cycle in two hosts. Now how does it move? It is found in the salivary gland of the sissy flies. That's from salivary gland and sissy fly is a blood sucking uh, insect. So it goes from salivary gland of sissy fly to the blood of human from blood it goes to lymph and from lymph it goes to cerebrospinal fluid so finally it reaches cerebrospinal fluid and the disease caused by this trypanosoma gambiens is known as African sleeping sickness. So what happens when this toxin which is produced by this particular uh, protest reaches cerebrospinal fluid, the person feels sleepy, lethargic. Then the person gets into an unconscious state and finally this leads to death. Now when we draw the structure of this trypanosoma, the structure is very simple. The body is little elongated like this. This is the posterior end and this is the anterior end. And on the posterior end is present a basal body. From the basal body arises this flagellum. Now let us see how this flagellum arises. A part of the flagellum remains inside the body. Then the flagellum comes out and it is in the form of this wavy structure and then the flagellum becomes free. So arising from the posterior part, becoming free from the anterior part. And all along the length, it is attached to the body with the help of a membrane. So this flagellar, uh, flagellar part is attached to the membrane and this is helping in undulating movement. Undulating means it is going to move in a wave-like manner. So we call it undulating membrane. 
So flagellum is attached to the body all along the length and some part of the flagellum remains inside the cell. This part is known as exoneme. And then there is from anterior side, the flagellum is free. In the cell are present some storage particles and these are known as volutin granules. This is the storage food. So structure is pretty much simple but it completes its life cycle in two hosts and that is why we call it digenetic. The disease caused is known as African sleeping sickness and the reason why we call it African sleeping sickness is Sissy fly is found only in this continent. So it is found only in this region and that is why unless and until both the hosts are there the pathogen is not going to complete its life cycle. So in African regions, sissy fly is present, humans are there. So this life cycle gets completed. So African word comes from there. And sleeping sickness because the person feels sleepy, lethargic, gets unconscious and this finally leads to death. This disease can also be termed as trypanosomiasis named after the pathogen. So we can call it African sleeping sickness which is the most common term which we use. Otherwise it can be called trypanosomiasis and this is a protest which is with one flagellum only. It is endoparasite disease causing that means it is a pathogenic protest and it comes into this group because of this flagella which is present. Now in the next part, we'll take few more examples of zooflagellate.